Hello again, this is Abbott Time for Clocks. Welcome, Amateur Clock Repair and History Channel, and everyone is welcome. In this video, I'm continuing uh, re editing some of my older video, reposting it. And the first video segment is unboxing a, I forget the year, it's either late 1890s or early 1900s, such as 1905, somewhere around there. But it's a black mantel clock made by New Haven. And what's unique about it is the marbleized accents and the trimmings around it. I like it very much. It's very unique. Challenging repair. It does have some issues, but all my clocks have issues. <laughs> so that's the first one I'd like to show. The second segment is is from when I took all the clocks lying about in my workshop and put them into storage totes to organize instead of just having them lay about on every surface. So the video is about me putting the clocks and showing them because some I have not shown before and I think they're all very interesting and hopefully the viewers will find them interesting but I put them into the storage totes and as I do that I played some older music in the background because that day it was over I think 110 over 110 Fahrenheit and I had the air conditioner all the fans in the shop going and it was still hot <laughs> so if the audio was on during that uh, recording all you would hear would be the fans making noise and that's why I played the tried to put some old music on but there were some copyright issues on the original upload so I'm trying to change out some of the music so as that won't happen this time also the clocks that were going into the totes they're not going in there for shipping so I don't need to pack them with bubble wrap and all that stuff because as I go in here they can just sit back to back and position carefully maybe a couple pieces of plywood in between I, I mean cardboard in between them but where these totes sit in the workshop that's where they're going to sit they're not going to be jostled about in a truck or anything like that so the clocks they're fine being in their totes in case anyone was worried about it thanks for watching here is another black mantle clock this one i was i really was not going to buy anymore but I'll, I, I have the Adrian model now, the Ingram Adrian clock. I That one was at a fair price. And I was looking and I just happened to see this one. Let's open the box and see what's going on. I was actually surprised when this box came today because I didn't know FedEx Ground delivered on Sunday. So this box came about 2,300 miles bouncing around in the back of trucks. The one good thing is that this doesn't have any glass in the bezel. There's no glass. And the front door on the clock doesn't have one of those either. A lot of uh, people don't know how to ship clocks. By the way, this came from Maryland. All right, I'm gonna have to pause while I get rid of all these peanuts. Black enameled wood case clock, ebonized, as they call it. Now, let's see here, let me get around to the back. curve that wood gets over the over the years. Wow. Okay. New Haven. Model would like nice label. Well, 
there goes the foot. <clears throat> Remember in the other video I said that um, you could turn the clock on its back after the pendulum's removed. This one has neither pendulum nor key. And then you can tighten up the feet. Now see this one here, the screws are still in there. Anyhow, since the clock is on its back, I can show better the... Um, now Scott at the old curiosity shop, he showed that Ingram clock was in his family and like this one you can see the dimples in the design and then the design itself these little holes those were all meant to be filled with a gold paint or gilding wax or whatever you put in there and this will look really really nice when that's reapplied and also around here there it is there's more of it you can tell you can see remnants of it of it right there but here's the, here's the unique uniqueness that makes this black mantle unique I've never seen this type of marbleized ornamentation on a clock I haven't done anything to it this is just how it's straight out of the box you can see the patina on those on the column, the alligator type finish from age and from heat and what what have you. See the other side, and that's in pretty good condition. The gilding, a lot of that's worn off. A lot of it's just dirty. I saw this and I thought, wow this will look amazing and then on the side it has a um, typical dragon head type ornament it doesn't have any door and this dial see I'm pretty sure the movement is partially detached and it's actually pulling the dial in so we're gonna get these hands off. I think the dials, the well, we'll see if the movement's loose in there. But anyhow, this is an ivory dial. You can't replace those, and they're gone. They're gone. Ivory, ivory. Um, it's kind of unique. It, w it wasn't invented till about 1899, and is made from uh, formaldehyde. And uh, I think cassian, a protein from milk. Let's see. No, the movement's in there. Okay. Yeah, but that dial's taking a beating. The other clock I got, the Adrian, it, I had to take the dial hands, the hands off immediately because. because all the, the screws holding the movement to the case, they were detached totally. And the only thing holding the movement on was the nut right here with the hands. And, and it actually did some, on the other clock, it did some damage because it was pulling the whole thing down. The weight of the movement was dragging the dial down, which was too bad. But this one, that's the ivory. have a celluloids related to it but they are different well that's the wood like mantle black mantle clock it's poor foot well it's always a challenge to get an old clock up and running and looking presentable and this this is definitely a challenge on this one but 
again, great potential. It just has some interesting features I hadn't seen before. So I'm, I'm pleased and thankful to have it. So.
again, Kathleen, across the ocean wild and wide, to where your heart has ever been, since first you were my bonnie bride, the roses all have left your I've watched them fade away and die. Your voice is sad whenever you speak, and tears bedim your loving eyes. Oh, I will take you back, Kathleen, to where your heart will be. And when the fields are fresh and green, I'll take you to your home again. I know you love me, Kathleen dear. Your heart was ever fond and true. I always feel when you are near that life holds nothing dear but you. The smiles that once you gave to me, I scarcely ever see them now. Though many, many times. I see a darkening shadow on your brow. Oh, I will take you back, Kathleen, to where your heart will feel no pain. And when the fields are fresh and green, oh,
heart and yet I cannot forget of a girl who's waiting for me underneath the moon. I'll be seeing her now pretty soon. When the moon shines down upon the mountain, she'll be waiting underneath this light. Like the whippoorwill sings in the valley, she'll be singing far into the night. Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing some of those nice old clocks. They're so full of character, the design. It's just, for me, it's really fascinating to see them, to learn about them, to touch them. They are pieces of history. People have lived and died with these clocks in their houses. Generations have come and gone. And when I work on them and see them, it makes me think about life that for everyone it comes and it goes just to keep things in perspective so I hope you enjoy them as well and until the next video I hope everyone stays <laughs> safe and healthy because if you if you watch the or read or listen to the news it doesn't get any better it's just negative, negative, negative. So these are times when you want to focus on faith and family and friends and take care of each other. All right. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.